Hey folks, uh, Jeremy Klein with you with uh, Outdoors NB and Maritimer Outdoors and Maritime Outdoors on Instagram. Uh, pro staff for Old Town. Today I want to, basically we're going to unbox or unwrap an Autopilot 136. Just have a look at the features that I know about uh, and we'll go over everything on the boat. So let's dive into it. So, this is my 2023 Pro Team uh, boat that I will be using myself. Alright, so, what we have, we have our prop, some instructions for wiring and the battery. There's the uh, autopilot remote. Then there's some different stuff to do with the prop, kill switch, paddle holder, mostly paddle holder, and there's a few other odds and ends there. So going through the boat, this is your tank well at the back. So I have a, a black pack by Yak Attack, 16 inch by 16 inch. Uh, basically you put uh, the 3700 series uh, little tackle boxes in it. You can fit seven of them in the uh, 16 by 16, so that's going to go back here, and you have space for that. Or if you have a dog, and let's say you're using this, you put an ambush blind on it. The ambush blind from Yak Attack will go up to a 14-foot boat. So let's say you put one of those on this, modify it so the the out the uh, the motor will still work. You can put a dog back here easily, or a pile of decoys. Um, for fishing, I'm going to have the uh, black pack here. Uh, and you, there's plenty of storage for other stuff too. We have two flush mount rails at the back, uh, and they're of course with the Sportsman series. They all, the Sportsman all have the flush mount. Um, the big water, like this guy over here, has the uh, the block still that you uh, you can screw into. But they've they've machined rails into those guys. But these guys are full flush mount rails. Going to be adding eight inch Yak Attack uh, Gear Track twos here just to give me some more because I'm going to actually secure the black pack here with that and there's going to be two uh, yak attack uh, mounts there. Uh, there are four scuppers in the back. Um, there's a scupper in the battery well which has the the uh, low profile plug in it, uh, scupper plug, one way valve. On the side of the boat right side you have a small with a gasket storage compartment so you can put that will actually fit I believe my Note 20 uh, 5G plus in there by the looks of it which is really cool and then that is right beside the seat when the seat is down I have it pushed forward right now so uh, and we are going to be using there's a pile of different batteries if you're looking for now I can't speak to the quality of the battery yet but I have uh, Eco Worthy is the battery that that I kind of went with. It was on sale for four hundred dollars down from seven hundred. So a hundred amp hour is what everybody's suggesting. If you watch uh, Ryan's videos or uh, I believe it's Tyler uh, from on also on the pro staff, uh, he recommends a hundred amp hour for the motor, as does Old Town in general. Um, but the guys that have been using it, they've gone with, so that's what I went with is 100 amp hour. And what I plan on doing is putting probably a, another 30 amp hour down in here. And we may go with a power distribution because I plan on putting, if we go to the back here, Old Town with a lot of the Sportsman series, they have uh, a spot already designed for shallow water motor mount. Now, videos I've watched online, if you put the, uh, what I'm going with is a power pole micro, if you put the power pole micro here, uh, it can interfere with the rudder at full left rudder. So Navarre Kayaks down in, I believe, Florida, they make an offset plate that I already have on order. That offset plate is going to bring us away from the rudder, so we don't have that interference. So there's that to keep in mind. So power poles going back here, I'm going to direct wire. Uh, I'll use one of Old Town's, which this does come with, through-haul kits already. There's, uh, I believe, three. One, 
two, and there's a third one somewhere. I just don't know where yet, but I, I'm pretty sure there's three somewhere. Um, so I'll do a, th a through haul that I'll install myself back here for that power pole. I may, depending on what, what I end up doing with this, aside from I do plan on uh, our local uh, in New Brunswick, which is Canada's premier uh, kayak fishing tournament, hook and paddle, big plug for them. Um, I'm going to be doing as much of that as I can this year. Uh, but beside from that, I don't know how much nighttime stuff I'll do some nighttime, so I may install some, some lights and stuff. Um, moving forward, we have our battery box. And I forget, somebody asked me on the Outdoors NB channel, which this will end up on. Oh, that's, I believe, a, a breaker reset. If memory serves me, that's what that is. A break, it's a button, breaker reset button. This is our battery box for that 100 amp hour battery pre-wired. Um, I'm just trying to think. That guy, I believe, plugs in here. And then the motor, so it's already pre-wired for the motor. So hook up your battery to that. That comes out of the box, plugs into there. Motor plugs in up here, already wired through the hull. So that keeps all that wiring all cleaned up. Moving forward, so we know about this hatch. We know about the motor plug. Moving forward is the seat. And this is the seat that everybody wants I'm pretty sure there's two seats there's the top water seat and then there's the sportsman seat and I'm pretty sure most folks were happier with the sportsman seat than the top water one I think because of the material and the padding if memory serves me sold a lot of both uh, with outdoors NB but I don't remember so the seat has two basically a lower and a higher option and if you want to go even higher than that again Navarre makes a lot of uh, and the, uh, on the market, aftermarket, there's a pile of different stuff that you can replace these with if you want to go even higher. Keep in mind, if you go higher with your seat, your center of gravity is going to increase and your stability is going to decrease the higher you go. Um, that being said, this is a huge beast of a boat. You can stand and cast from it no problem. People are doing that with the top waters, the big waters, and then this. And if you look at the, I guess we can't really see the bottom too much but I know from bringing this up from Old Town that it does have yeah you look at the bottom it's actually designed far more similar to those new sportsmen and, and top waters than it is to the old predator which is now the big water 132 that's more of a V hull and a very wide single mono mono hull whereas this has more of a W to it so the things you have to keep in mind with this guy, much like the top water and the Sportsman 120 and 106, is when you select your cart for this, make sure that it's a cart that's compatible with this style of hull because it is more of a W hull. It's got a center keel line and then two, like basically like two pontoons on the bottom. Let me just see if, no, I can't, well I can. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod and I will show you exactly what I mean. Anyway, you can see this is definitely not like the Predator before it. It's essentially the same hull design as the uh, Topwater and the Sportsman. It has like a W hull bit of a keel at the back here and that's going to give you better tracking and then these two basically these two pontoons similar to a catamaran are going to provide superior stability in fairly dynamic water uh, obviously the wider that you go with the boat and you can see a lot of my social media posts about stability the wider the boat is the less control you have over it and that's why these things are great for basically flat water to moderately dynamic water uh, any wide boat, any sit on top, any wide recreational boat. So they're great for stability, for standing and casting, and up to fairly moderate uh, sea state for a kayak, for small craft. Uh, so yeah, this this has got this design, which I'm glad to see. I wasn't really sure because I didn't do a lot of research into it before I uh, before I ordered it, but I'm very glad to see that. So I've got to, the way I'm kind of transporting it is I've got the bunk set up for it. And I've got the bunk sitting in here and they actually work quite well. I've got to do a little adjustment to it. 
but I just want to be careful too that it's being supported where it's strongest and I think there's some a fair bit of strength in these angles in here but maybe I'll talk to Old Town to see what they recommend for supporting while transporting and maybe they'll say upside down because that is a great way to transport stuff and to, to store it even is upside down with these so I'll talk to them and see but so moving forward uh, rod holders that come included there's four flush mount two behind the seat right at the, the front of the, the tank well and then just forward of where the seat is you have two more so you can have two out of your way in the back and then depending if you're let's say you cast to your left you can have a rod in the rod holder on the right and be casting with the one that would go on the left here so you can have storage for four rods uh, ready to go um, and then I'm going to be actually installing some stuff uh, again uh, that I have there's a, a lay down rod holder setup that I'm going to give a go uh, moving forward the this particular sportsman is equipped with the uh, I think it's Evo or the, the pads on the deck here so uh, another thing uh, obviously if you're gonna use this for hunting which we're gonna do this fall I really want to show you guys this there's piles of room if you wanted to basically lay I can set the seat here lay the back back and I can lay down in this thing if I want to lay so the ambush I can use it as a layout line which is designed to do I just got to figure out what to do with the the motor when I'm doing that so motor uh, the uh, compartment for the motor comes with a plug if you want to paddle I mean this would be a big boat to paddle but it is doable for sure so there's the plug and then your motor sits in here clamps into this uh, motor mount uh, stainless steel and there is a kill switch here set up and I noticed I got to do some reading on this but there's a handle attached to it on the pulley system so I assume we can pull stuff up with this so there's a magnet in here if I'm reading all this right this is all new to me I've sold a couple of these but I've never used one so it's new best part of the kill switch stuff I believe kill switch magnet carrier yep adjustable up and down for the varying temperatures and environment conditions so it's got to be contacting the kill switch plate and it'll it'll continue to move all right we plug in our motor here our rudder is controlled by our feet unlike uh, the PDLs where you're obviously you're using your feet so the rudder on the PDLs is controlled by a hand controller basically where I believe if memory serves me that has it where that storage compartment is on most of the PDL models there would be a, a rudder handle there or a tiller handle whatever you want to call it um, so we're controlled by our rudder by our feet here um, if I want to put in which I have uh, fish finder already here it's on my John boat right now but I'm going to be using it on this for tournament stuff and I cast off to my left so I'm probably going to put my head unit here and we have a through haul wire kits already installed in a perfect spot for that so uh, fish finder heads gonna be here my uh, lay down rod holder is gonna be over here I got a mighty mount coming for the back side of that that'll get things down so it's not in my way for casting uh, what else we have to show you the bow unlike most of the other models actually has a access to the hull storage set up um, and when you use this obviously you want to be mindful that if you put something in here that's not secured somehow it could potentially end up anywhere in the hull because this is all open except for where these scuppers come down through and the scuppers kind of have they serve two purposes they allow water to drain but they also the channel themselves creates structural strength throughout the hull and uh, they, they're strategically placed kind of to, to give that structural strength so that things don't move and warp because we are linear polyethylene which is my favorite kayak material apart from composites which I don't want a composite fishing kayak because I hit stuff a lot right so anyway um, flush mount rod holders up front we have carry handles here carry handle up front I am replacing this and that with the Navarre handle which allows you to mount directly on the handle so that's coming uh, the plate for the back is coming from Navarre 
Um, we have a bunch of yak attack stuff coming to trick this puppy out, which I'll do another video once I get everything. I've got some Scotty stuff already here, some Railblazer stuff already here that can go on now. But once I get everything together, get it kind of set up, we'll we'll do a video again. But so this is the boat. It comes in that tackle box is a paddle holder for here. So your paddle would go along the length of the boat, obviously. But, I mean, that's that's just a real brief overview, the general gist of things. If you have questions, I'm sure there's stuff that I didn't go over that you guys want to see. They have a little molded out thing here for, I'm assuming, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, rods to come and sit, the, the top of the rod to come sit up through here. And I'm sure you can buy something to mount in here maybe even on those tracks. So your rod can sit up in here. Some of their other boats had a different like covered thing for the, the rod tip to protect it. But I'm pretty sure that is for uh, the rod to stick out the front of the boat if necessary. And you could even put a paddle uh, shaft in there if you wanted to store paddle somehow. But pretty sure that's basically for, for the uh, rod tips. One other thing I noticed, there's our third through hull mounting, or through hull uh, wire kit is right behind the the uh, motor mount. So there's one, two, three. I can focus that. There we go. That's it. If you have any questions, give us a shout. Thanks for watching. Oh, one other thing. You're wondering about pricing. In Canada for 2023, uh, I believe this was 6200 last year. This year it's 6499. Uh, it was just 63 last year. So yeah, if you want a Autopilot 136 in Canada, they are map price limited, minimum advertised price limited to 6499, um, and that's just the the way things are going, I guess. Uh, anything like this of this caliber is going to be in that price range uh yeah so questions concerns comments let me know thanks for watching bye